Today in Cannabis News, Idaho state cannabis activists update their voter initiative for statewide recreational cannabis legalization. In new spending bills, the U.S. Congress advances cannabis safeguards for medical cannabis systems and universities. And the World Anti-Doping Agency claims the United States is largely responsible for the global cannabis restriction that resulted in American sprinter Shikari Richardson's Olympics disqualification. Broadcasting live from the Tricombs.com studios in Southern California, it's time for your morning buzz. We bring you late-breaking news that keeps you up to date with what's happening in the cannabis industry. It's Wednesday, July 14th, and Tricombs.com is bringing you the top cannabis news from around the web. You can also listen on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Search Tricombs and subscribe. First up, after a review by the Idaho State Attorney General, cannabis advocates in the state have filed new provisions for a ballot measure to legalize cannabis statewide. In the meantime, another group of advocates are busily gathering signatures from a different campaign to legalize medicinal cannabis in the state during the 2022 midterm elections. The breadth of recreational legalization would be rather modest. It would make it legal for adults 21 years or older to acquire a maximum of three ounces of cannabis on private property. Yet home growing would be outlawed and there would be no legalized or regulated cannabis commerce framework. Possessing cannabis away from private property would still be illegal, while transporting a personal amount of marijuana from a jurisdiction where the marijuana was legally purchased would be authorized. Individuals would be able to visit retailers in adjacent states like Montana, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington and transport cannabis home with them. Next up, in recent budget legislation for fiscal year 2022, the U.S. Congress has added safeguards for states with medicinal cannabis systems, as well as many other cannabis-focused measures. Two significant House appropriations bills, including verbiage on cannabis matters, were adopted in the subcommittee this week, and the full committee is expected to vote on them on Thursday. The most important provision which has been included in appropriations bills and incorporated into federal statutes since 2014, would prohibit the Justice Department from intervening with state medicinal cannabis systems with taxpayer funds. A lasting provision in the newest Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies budget bill would prohibit the Department of Justice or its affiliate, the Drug Enforcement Administration, from meddling with state-licensed hemp operations. The bill includes a new clause that would bar cities and states from receiving some federal law enforcement grants if they keep allowing no-knock warrants in drug-related matters. After the murder of Breonna Taylor by law enforcement in a failed drug bust, the policy gained nationwide attention. Last up, the World Anti-Doping Agency, or WADA, is emphasizing that the United States had a vital role in the inclusion of cannabis on the registry of prohibited substances for global professional athletes, and that it can now play a role in updating the international regulation. WADA recounted the history of how cannabis was first added to the prohibited substances registry and described why it couldn't independently overturn the penalties in a letter to U.S. Representatives Jamie Raskin and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who lately contacted the international agency about the disqualification of U.S. sprinter Shikari Richardson due to a positive cannabis screening in a legal state. WADA noted that while the Restricted Substance Registry is reviewed and updated on a regular basis, decisions are based on an agreement among delegates of member nations. WADA says that no time since the first prohibited list was published in 2004 has WADA received an objection from U.S. stakeholders concerning the inclusion of cannabinoids on the prohibited list. As has been reported by some media, the United States has been one of the most vocal and strong advocates for including cannabinoids on the prohibited list, reads the letter from WADA President Wiltold Benka. The meeting minutes and written submissions received from the U.S. nearly two decades, in particular from the United States Anti-Doping Agency, have consistently advocated for cannabinoids to be included on the prohibited list. 
WADA argues that criticism from the U.S. of the cannabis prohibition should not be directed only at WADA, but must rather consider the fact that the United States is largely responsible for establishing and sustaining the worldwide restriction. That was today's buzz. Thanks for listening. For more cannabis news and insights from industry professionals and a place to discuss these stories and others, visit trichomes.com. And be sure to catch up with all of our other cannabis industry related podcasts like Hash It Out, Careers in Cannabis, or the International Cannabis Conversation wherever you get your podcasts. For trichomes.com, I'm Devin Leon. And I'm RJ Balde. Have a good one.